Linear workflow deals primarily with gamma. And because of this, we're going to need to have control over gamma in various different ways within Vue in order to follow the requirements of linear workflow. There are different areas in which to um, access gamma throughout Vue, and of course this leads to the idea of um, what kind of gamma we see, what kind of gamma is coming in, and what kind of gamma is going out to our final file. So let's take a look at those. If I go to File, down to Options, and then down to Gamma Options, we can see uh, Vue's internal settings for dealing with gamma. Now let's uh, look at this. We have Gamma Correction Enable. This basically will turn off gamma correction for all of the elements within here and uh, supposedly give you something similar to the linear workflow. However, it doesn't deal with gamma coming in with regards to um, picking its way through that, so it's not necessarily the right choice for what you need. Now, with that said, um, we have three different elements of gamma that we would be dealing with. The first here is primarily dealt with in the viewing area. So things like your um, renders, uh, what you see in the renders specifically, uh, what you see in the material ball, etc. And you can see these check marks down here that will allow you to pick individuals uh, to turn on and off. Now when I say dealing with your renders, I don't mean just the next render that comes out, but rather all of your renders. So if you did a number of renders at say 1.8, which is the default here, and then you switch to a value of 1, you'll notice that all the renders that came before you changed this value will also appear to change. They don't actually change, it's just the way that we're actually viewing it. So this is about viewing gamma. Next is the texture maps. So we have an input value. When they come in, how is Vue supposed to read them? Does it read them as having a 1.8, a 1, or a 2.2? I'll talk about that in a moment. And then we have the final output. This is not to the actual render view. Remember I said that this will alter what you see in your final render. But this deals with the final file output and will not be seen until you load a file that has been rendered out through Vue. Now, the values that we should be expecting to see is usually a value of 1 or a value of 2.2. 2.2 is usually referred to as sRGB. Um, it's what we see most frequently when we're dealing with cameras from our photos, digital cameras, etc. Unless, of course, it's a raw format that may be linear. And then, of course, linear files will be dealing with a gamma of 1. So 2.2 um, is probably the value that we're looking for to view the final. Oops, excellent, click that. 2.2 is the input if we're dealing with JPEGs coming in. And the output, probably want it not to be affected to follow the idea of linear workflow. So you can alter these uh, as you need. Remember, this is incoming and this is outgoing. So um, if I were to double this stuff up, um, I'm adding 2.2 on top of 2.2, which is basically what it would end up happening. Um, I'm just going to show you. If I go ahead and render this off, uh, let me just say OK there as well. And I render it off, and I get this. I've already turned off auto exposure. You can see the gamma of 2.2 has been applied. I'm going to say OK to that. I'm going to go back to my gamma options. And I'm going to change this secondary value, 2.2. Render again. And you would think that in that output, something would be different. But as I said, they're both the same. You can look at them and they're essentially the same. Additionally, you can also alter that gamma. Um, it's the same window. Um, just up here. So why are they the same? Well, again, we have a different view um, gamma than we have with regards to the actual final output. So if I go to Photoshop here, here are two files that I rendered out, one with 2.2 incoming and 2.2 outgoing, and one that was 2.2 incoming and a value of 1 outgoing. And you can see that the one 
that is outgoing with a value of 1 is more appropriate to what you should be seeing. Rendering this stuff out is um, also requiring another element for you to pay attention to, which is the output format and its bit depth. So when I'm rendering this out, I should be rendering out to something that will support high bit depth. So I've rendered out to HDRs, so those two are HDRs, I loaded them up in Photoshop just fine. They should also load in programs like Nuke and, and so on fairly easily. Um, if you do need to convert them to something else, you can always do so. And one of the other ones that will support high bit depth would be something like a, um, an EXR. Um, I believe a TIFF would probably also render out to the 32-bit, they can have 32-bit TIFFs. But the most common ones would be um, the HDR or the EXR. Now I've been told that the EXR doesn't play well with animation inside of view currently. There's a little issue with that. Um, probably will be fixed. But um, I haven't tested it myself. So um, just if you want to test it out, go ahead and, and see what happens. Um, otherwise, render off to the HDR. So um, that covers the rendering portion of things. And there's another aspect that we can consider, which if I go to my shader ball, control, left click, go into its uh, texturing, I've uh, selected a mapped image and I have a texture here. And if you look off to the side, you have a thing for alpha and this little guy here, which is your gamma. So you can manipulate on an image by image basis the gamma, either to use the system gamma that we set up in the settings, or you can go ahead and override that gamma and put your own gamma values into it. So say 2.2, I say OK. It's reading it in as 2.2, which alters this to become darker. So you notice it got darker as a result. Um, well, actually, it probably didn't get too much darker. Maybe it actually stayed the same because I already have it set to input 2.2. Let's try a gamma of 1 and see what happens. That should change it. It's really paying attention. There we go. So there's there's a change. There's a big change. So yeah, the gamma of 2.2 .2 had already changed. Um, if I had gone from 1.8 to 2.2, .2, you would notice it gets darker. The the higher the number, the darker it will eventually get. Now something that will change this because it is currently being read as 2.2, .2, and I go ahead. Um, I'm just going to switch to bump and control click here because that's going to bring me into the node editor. And I look here. I have an option of going ahead and adding a gamma correction node here as well. Um, this would be not treated as incoming, but after I've done maybe some manipulations to it. Now there are some cases under which you may want to do your filtering or other manipulations in a mode where it's been um, brought in however it is, and then do gamma correction um, after those changes. Um, that, that will be part of that. that process for you and you'll have to determine what situations under which um, that will work best but that's an option for you so I'm just going to go to color correction gamma and once I've done that I can do an auto connect um, I couldn't do an auto connect before because if I just try and get a color node it won't connect between them uh, it doesn't allow that input but now when I click on it out after I've made that you'll notice it's automatically a gamma correction node and the gamma is currently set to 1. And if I were to increase it again by 2.2, .2, well, it's reading double that information as if it was color corrected again, and it's trying to bring it down to a more of a linear format. So you notice that it gets much darker. So those are the main elements of gamma that you can use to change any of your images within here. So just a quick review, gamma settings, your um, File, Options, Gamma Settings, or after a render, you can click on the Gamma there, and you can see these guys. So your first one, of course, is your output to the final render. So um, the viewable areas, really, and viewable here, here, etc. So that's what this one primarily changes. Your input of all your images is the next one here. So input gamma, any texture coming in, reads as having this. And then your output is to your final render and to your final render only, so to your files. Not to the screen. Remember, the screen handles up here. This is your final files. Then we have 
do 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 gamma correction here so it will change that higher values will lead to darker images and of course control left click going in here and adding a gamma correction node which is found underneath here color correction gamma and then you can change your values there so that's all the places that you can change your gamma to go ahead and get um, close to linear workflow hopefully that helps and uh, that's it.